Hers is an American story. That's said. right. And that's what Dorothy likes to say about you, yeah. that you are the success story for an American boy who came from nothing and made his life into something very unusual. In the I'm just a guy who grew up and played in the sand pile in front of the Beresford in 1928. My father had a grocery store mm. on the corner of 88th Street in Amsterdam Amp. I went to PS 166 on 89th Street, and I was very lucky that my best friend in those days was Babe Ruth, the mm. famous baseball player. And how did that happen? Well. My gang used to play down on Riverside Drive, and we played baseball. And one day we were coming home, one guy said, uh, my father told me that Babe Ruth lives in this house. And he went up and asked the doorman. And the doorman said, yes, and he'll be home in about 10 minutes. And so we waited, and then every day when he got out of the car, we tackled him, gave all of us nicknames, and we were there. But that 1928, my mother and father were eventually divorced, and I was telling my mother I live with my father, and I told my mother that my father I was living with my mother, and I got a job. Sixteen, I was absolutely on my own. He didn't say that he dropped out of school. <laughs> he, he had four. to. He was living on his own, yeah. Dottie. Yeah. At 14. What? I lived in a, a rooming house, 88th Street and Columbus Avenue. By that time, my father's store had failed, and I worked for $5 a week to get to work on 39th Street and 3rd Avenue. I either hitched on the back of the trolley car or ran all the way from 88th Street and Columbus to there. And my big treat was on the last day of the work, that time there was a horn and heart at Automat on 42nd Street and 3rd Avenue. And for 15 cents, I got a chicken pot pie, and that lasted me for two days. Anyway, I just wandered around, had jobs here and there, etc. I became interested in jazz and became involved with people who were making records and that sort of thing, and then eventually the war came, and I was in the war. I uh, wanted to be a pilot, but uh, had no knowledge. But I learned trigonometry and algebra in pre-flight. When I uh, got into a little airplane and I pushed the throttle forward, and I heard 300 horsepower gone, I practically crapped in my pants. So, so shocking. Anyway. <laughs> so that was the beginning of your love of aviation. Well... Yes, plane. Yeah, so that really, I think, should segue us into the plane that you made for yes. yourself and how you yes. flew Dottie around the world. So, so were you involved with Klenowicz Airport? Oh, and how? Klenowicz International. A, a <laughs> Tell us about Mr. Klenowicz. <laughs> Klenowicz. Yes. Well, I made it into an international <laughs> airport. <laughs> this is the story I like. I took off from uh, Klenowicz, and my first stop was Groton, Connecticut. Not, not too very far. Big, not a very big flight, but we had no fuel on mm -hmm. at Klinowickus, so oh. I had to fill up my tank. And then flew from there to Setil, seven islands in the St. Lawrence River. And then from there I went to Goose Bay, Labrador. And from Labrador I went across the Davis Strait to Narsasawak in Greenland. And from Greenland, I went over the ice cap to Iceland. And from Iceland to Dublin, Ireland. And from Dublin, I went to over England to Amsterdam. Because the year before, in 66, I had made all the G.I. Joe commercials in a place called Divendrecht Studio in Amsterdam. Then from there, I came back by way of London and Scotland, Iceland, the same way yeah. back. As you know, I've been here, and I have many pictures of Frank and myself, many, many other people who flew in and out of the uh, airport. Where did you make your airplane? I made the airplane <laughs> right here in my house in the cellar, the first part of it. And then afterward, I built an extension 
to my garage so that I could make the wings. But the fuselage and the wheels and everything else I made right here downstairs. I have a picture of it in flight. I'll have to find it a second later. This is what it looked like. This was a meeting. I'm right in the center. This is me and that's the airplane that I built. And all these other people either built or restored airplanes. And they're called the Experimental Aircraft Association. And they were all here, I mean to say, in East Hampton. This is the airplane that I flew across the ocean. This is the young Wendy, only it's the young Sid, had the wherewithal to put it together and then fly it and not fall asleep at the wheel. Really? business and I didn't know what it was all about but he said it all started right here at Clenny Wickes that yes. he learned enough to make a plane and I didn't know the, the cast of characters is anything going on there now do you think at, at Clenny Wickes is there any people who are involved in flight there now or it no no at Clenny Wickes it's just nothing, really a private nothing. air and that's about it well thank you very much